Tsunamis are one of the deadliest forces on Earth, capable of destroying everything from cities to entire islands. Here in the United States, we typically associate them with disasters in the Pacific, usually around places like Indonesia, India, or Japan. But is this some false sense of security? Is it possible that many of us are in more danger than we realize? Believe it or not, there are plenty of subduction zones and areas of concern just off of each coast. No longer are the danger zones simply in the Pacific Ocean, where we think all of the volcanoes and earthquakes occur. Tsunamis threaten each coast and millions more people than originally thought. Here are five potentially massive tsunamis that could hit the United States. Typically, the most tsunami-prone areas of the United States are the West Coast states, Washington, Oregon, and California. This is because there is a fault line that extends throughout all of these states, making them incredibly prone to powerful earthquakes. As we know, tsunamis are commonly caused by sudden slips of tectonic plates that occur at fault lines. What we don't stop to think about is that these fault lines are found in more places than just the West Coast. Off the eastern coast of the United States lies the continental shelf, the edge of our continental landmass. It extends beyond the entire eastern coast of the country, from Florida to Maine. The section of continental shelf off the coasts of North Carolina and Virginia are only a couple of hundred miles away from shore. Here, our continental landmass ends, sharply dropping off into the deep ocean. It is also here where there is an incredibly high risk of an underwater landslide. These landslides have the potential to displace large amounts of water, sending the waves rushing towards the North Carolina and Virginia coastlines. Scientists have studied the risk of tsunamis in this area and have determined that the wave generated could resemble something like a storm surge you would see from a Category 3 or 4 hurricane. However, some researchers believe that much larger waves are possible, growing somewhere around 30 to 50 feet tall. North Carolina's outer banks would be at greatest risk. As they are already prone to erosion, it is entirely possible that some sections of islands, or even entire islands, would be wiped out by such a wave. When it comes to natural disasters, there are theories that are based on scientific fact and some that are conjecture. Some say a volcanic eruption on an island 3,500 miles away could push out a wall of water that would destroy much of the east coast of the United States. Sounds pretty far-fetched, right? According to research done by geologists, it is. However, it hasn't stopped the theory from creeping back into the realm of public discussion each time tsunamis are mentioned. The theory pretty much plays out like this. Just off of the African coast and the Canary Islands of Spain sits the island of La Palma, on that island is the Cumbre Vieja volcano, which has been known to be incredibly active and prone to large eruptions. One day, there could be an eruption so massive that much of the side of the volcano would fall into the ocean, displacing a huge amount of water and sending a wave across the Atlantic, much like a disaster movie. Of course, once it reaches the eastern coast of the United States, a wave would have grown hundreds of feet tall, wiping out cities and killing millions. Geologists say that it is a very unlikely event, but that doesn't make it impossible. As a matter of fact, this event has happened before, around 100,000 to 200,000 years ago. It has been confirmed due to the discovery of some landslide deposits on the ocean floor. However, these are not frequent events. The scientific community is mostly torn on the subject, with some researchers saying more attention should be paid to the possibility. For the moment, though, this theory appears to be a little too far-fetched to give it too much attention. Just off the western coast of Canada lies an area known as the Cascadia Subduction Zone. It is a 600-mile-long fault that runs from the northern shores of California up to British Columbia and sits around 100 miles off the coast. It is not known for having many earthquakes, as there have been only 41 in the last 10,000 years. However, there is another, more menacing title that this fault line has. It is also known as the Megathrust Fault, and is considered by many in the geologic community to be a ticking time bomb. In this area, the Pacific Tectonic Plate does not move much against the Juan de Fuca Plate. However, when it does end up moving and scraping up against the de Fuca Plate, the energy that is generated is enough to thrust large sections of Earth upward in a very quick, sudden motion. 
Such thrusts have been the cause of many devastating tsunamis in the past. The story here would be exactly the same. California and many of its large cities would feel some effect. However, the most at-risk states would be Alaska and Hawaii. Waves that could reach over 80 feet high would strike with incredible force, taking thousands of lives and leaving many thousands more homeless. Stretching for 2,500 miles off the coast of Alaska is the Aleutian Subduction Zone. It is the convergence boundary between the North American Tectonic Plate and the Pacific Tectonic Plate and extends from the Alaska Range to the Russian Kamchatka Peninsula. Here, the Pacific Plate is being pushed underneath the North American Plate at a rate that changes from 5.1 centimeters per year to 7.5 centimeters per year. It is also here where the greatest threat for a tsunami is. Subduction zones, much like the Cascadia Zone, are of major concern to geologists and scientists. As one plate pushes underneath another, a movement called subducting, it starts to create an intense amount of energy. But unlike other subduction zones across the world, the Aleutian Zone is the most volatile due to its incredible length. At 2,500 miles long, a sudden megathrust could occur, leaving most of Alaska prone to huge tsunamis. However, the other deadly feature of this subduction zone is the direction. Unlike the Cascadia Zone, this is not a north-south situated fault. It stretches from east to west, aiming much of its potential energy in a southerly direction. If a sudden megathrust were to ever occur in this area, the waves would go out in every direction, mostly directed towards the south. But as the waves travel south, they would start spreading out a bit, putting not only the western United States at risk, but Japan, the Philippines, Australia, and parts of South America. For the time being, we can breathe a sigh of relief as the subduction zone does not see much in the way of seismic activity. Situated in the Caribbean Sea, just off the coast of the Dominican Republic, lies the small island of Puerto Rico. This area does not seem to be on the radar of people who discuss seismic activity and tsunamis, but it very well should. Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands are located on an active plate boundary between the North American Plate and the northeast corner of the Caribbean Plate, making it very prone to earthquakes. Near the fault line lies the Puerto Rico Trench, which is the deepest part of the Atlantic Ocean. With depths of over 25,000 feet, the only deeper place on Earth would be near the Mariana Trench in the Pacific Ocean. Being next to this enormous trench brings the risk of underwater landslides, just like the risk with the continental shelf off the eastern United States coast. However, there is much greater risk here at the Puerto Rico Trench as the area is incredibly prone to earthquakes. The region actually has a history of quakes. In 1943, a magnitude 7.5 earthquake rocked the island, along with an 8.1 and a 6.9 in 1946 and 1953. Also, we shouldn't forget the January 12, 2010 earthquake that crippled the country of Haiti. Although far away from Puerto Rico, the risk remains the same. With nearly 3 million people living on the island and on surrounding islands, a sudden earthquake could trigger an underwater landslide. The resulting tsunami would far surpass anything ever seen in the area. But here, the impact could be incredibly severe. The Caribbean Sea has thousands of islands scattered throughout its expanse, many of them small. Should a large enough tsunami occur, some of these islands could disappear. Not to mention the death toll, which would be unlike anything we have seen before. The threats of tsunamis exist in each part of our country. Fault lines and underwater trenches can be found in nearly every ocean. Even though they may not be active at the moment, you can rest assured that our planet does not sleep, nor do its dangerous features. So, we shouldn't let our guard down. To see our video about the latest tsunamis ever recorded, be sure to click the link on screen now. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.